This brief meditation <coughs> is called Heart and Mind. Heart and Mind. Now the passage I'm going to read might seem to have nothing whatsoever to do with that, but I hope you'll see as we, uh, we get into it that it has a great deal to say about the heart and the mind. We're reading from Genesis 24, Genesis 24, which is the story of Abraham's servant being sent from A Abraham back to Paden Aram to Abraham's family to bring a daughter or rather to bring a bride for Isaac and uh, it's one of the most wonderful illustrations in the Old Testament of the work of the Holy Spirit Eliezer the, the, the servant is a picture of the Holy Spirit sent by the father to find a bride for the son and if you will take those few types and apply them through this chapter, you'll have more truth than you know what to do with it. It's a precious foretaste, it's a precious picture of the calling out of the church from the world, pictured by Rebecca, to come to the father's son Isaac and to be married to him. The, the types here are just abundant, and there's so much I could say about this chapter, but I want to concentrate on a very important subject of the heart and the mind. I'm going to start reading in Genesis 24 at verse 32 where the servant arrives after meeting Rebecca at the well he arrives back at her father's house. Verse 32 Genesis 24 and the man came into the house and he ungirded his camels and gave straw and provender for the camels and water to wash his feet and the men's feet that were with him. And there was set meat before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have told mine errand. And he said, Speak on. I've got to pause there and tell you that the Lord's work is more important than your diet. The Holy Spirit will have you put the things of God before your belly. Verse 34. And he said, I am Abraham's servant, and the Lord hath blessed my master greatly. And he's become great, and he hath given him flocks and herds and silver and gold, and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. And Sarah, my master's wife, bear a son to my master when she was old, and unto him hath he given all that he hath. And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I dwell, but thou shalt go unto my father's house and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son. And I said unto my master, Peradventure the woman will not follow me. And he said unto me, The Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee, and prosper thy way, and thou shalt take a wife for my son, of my kindred, and of my father's house. Then shalt thou be clear from this my oath, when thou comest to my kindred, and if they give not thee one, thou shalt be clear from my oath. And I came this day unto the well, and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if now thou do prosper my way which I go, behold, I stand by the well of water, and it shall come to pass, that when the virgin cometh forth to draw water, and I say to her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink. And she say to me, Both drink thou, and I will also draw for thy camels. Let the same be the woman whom the Lord hath appointed out for my master's son. Again, I must pause and just throw in another lovely picture here. Uh, we read elsewhere in this chapter that this servant took ten camels of the camels of his master. Those camels are a picture of the Ten Commandments, a picture of the Lord of God. And Rebecca had to be willing to draw water for the camels. Now Christians should not despise the law. We should fill, fulfil the law through Christ. We should be willing, as believers, to water the camels. We fulfil the law through the power of Christ. It's impossible otherwise. And of course, there is no salvation to be had by fulfilling the law we find salvation through grace through faith in the shed blood of the lord jesus but having found that by the spirit of the lord we seek to fulfill the lord the lord jesus said in matthew 5 think not that i am come to destroy the lord or the prophets i am not come to destroy but to fulfill and so it must be true with all who are in christ he still seeks today to fulfill the law but of course as the lord goes on in matthew 5 his teachings are far greater than the law, which he refers to there as the least commandments. Back to 45, verse 45. 
And before I had done speaking in mine heart, behold, Rebekah came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder, and she went down unto the well and drew water. And I said unto her, Let me drink, I pray thee. And she made haste and let down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. So I drank, and she made the camels drink also. And I asked her and said, Whose daughter art thou? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, who milk her bear unto him. And I put the earring upon her face and the bracelets upon her hands. And I bowed down my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord God and my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. And now, if ye will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceeded from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go, and let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord hath spoken. It came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bearing himself to the earth. The servant brought forth jewels of silver, jewels of gold and raiment, and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. And they did eat and drink, he and the men that were with him, and tudded all night. And they rose up in the morning, and he said, Send me away unto my master. And her brother and her mother said, Let the damsel abide with us a few days, at the least ten. After that she shall go. And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord hath prospered my way. Send me away, that I may go to my master. And they said, We will call the damsel and inquire at Hermeth. And they called Rebekah, and said unto her, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. And they sent away Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebekah, and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. And Rebekah arose, and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels, and followed the man. And the servant took Rebekah, and went his way. So again, we have here, in the servant, Eliezer, Abraham's servant, the Holy Ghost, sent from the father to find a bride for the son. Isaac, of course, a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. But there are some striking pictures here. Um, and of course, you're free to disagree with me, but this seems to be very much the way uh, the Christian's experience goes. Um, it might just be that by the time you're listening to this, there'll be a message, a brief little word that I gave a while back called bread or stones in which I was seeking to emphasise the difference between the dry letter, the knowledge of the scripture, and the truth, the experience of the knowledge of the scripture. And what I have to say here about heart and mind really is just another way of uh, defining those things. When we're talking about uh, the truth, knowing the truth, we're talking about the heart. When we're talking about the letter we're thinking more about the mind and the difference is absolutely critical uh, and I hope I can illustrate that from what's said in the latter part of this narrative now what I'm concerned with is three characters Rebecca's father Bethuel Rebecca's mother who whose name we're not told and Laban Rebecca's brother and off the bat I'm going to suggest to you that her father speaks of the heart. Her brother Laban speaks of the will. And her mother, whatever Rebecca's mother's name was, uh, speaks of the mind. Now let's read again. Uh, the servant is talking at first to Laban and Bethuel, the father and brother of Rebecca. And we read in verse 50, Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceedeth from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go, and let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord hath spoken. The will is affected by the mind, and is affected by the heart. 
in the unsaved man he's dominated by his mind and his mind is dominated by the flesh the world and the devil but in the believer his will is affected by the heart it's our it's our affections that actually lead us one way or the other and the heart if you will is the last word the heart it is that directs our steps either after the lord or after the after the mind and the will sits in the middle and whichever of those has the upper hand so the man goes so the unsaved man he has a will but his mind because he's uninstructed by the Lord, because he's unconverted, because Jesus doesn't dwell in his heart. The unsaved man is always led by his mind. His mind is led by the world, the flesh and the devil. And as Herbert Rave says, an unsaved man never had an original thought in his life. And I'm inclined to agree with that. But what happens here, Laban, Rebecca's brother, the will, and Bethuel, her father, without hesitation say, she is to go it is the will of her father speaking of the Christian's heart that she go with the Holy Ghost and be united to uh, Isaac but then further on we read verse 55 and her brother and her mother said let the damsel abide with us a few days at the least ten after that she shall go so now there's some vacillation now there is some hesitancy now something has got in the way of that resolve that the father and the brother had made that is to say respectively the heart and the will now the brother the will is being persuaded otherwise by her mother the mind and if you have a margin in your bible and i hope it's a kjv you're much better off with the KJV if you have a margin in your Bible uh, let the damsel of the Bible us a few days the margin says a full year or 10 months so this wasn't just you know the rest of the week or whatever this was a this was a major hesitation and so the servant replies in verse 6, 56 and he said unto them hinder me not seeing the Lord hath prospered my way send me away that I may go to my master your unsanctified mind will hinder your progress when the Lord is speaking to your heart to go in a particular direction and so what happens here is Laban her brother speaking of the will is caught betwixt father and mother in the first place we find him agreeing with Bethuel the thing proceeded from the Lord we cannot speak unto thee bad or good behold Rebecca to be fully take her and go but then we find her brother Laban being um, influenced by her mother let the damsel abide us a few days at the least ten after that she shall go so the will is trapped in between if you if you will accept this between the heart on the one hand represented by the father who without hesitation would have us go without any hesitation would have us to leave our kin in a sense in a spiritual sense and go and follow the lord go with the holy spirit and be wed to isaac but the mother thinks differently the mother wants her to stay behind and so your mind unsanctified uh, without the the power of god your mind uh, will lead you to stay in the world this is why Paul exhorts us, doesn't he, in Romans chapter 12, uh, in the opening couple of verses there, we read, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God so we're told our minds need to be transformed and of course they are transformed are they not by Holy Scripture but they are transformed by Holy Scripture believed and obeyed they are not transformed by Holy Scripture merely heard it is not enough for you and I to read our Bibles without asking God to touch our hearts and touch our minds as well and our will the mind is not inactive in the christian life the word of god comes to the mind 
but it must then reach the heart and when the heart is reached then the will will go in the right direction if the heart isn't reached if there isn't an embracing of the truth and a ready obedience we're going to follow our minds and we're going to follow the crowd and our minds are not going to be transformed and we're going to be living like the world so you see here the conflicts Laban the brother first with the father then with the mother tossed to and fro you might say by every wind of doctrine but we are to ask the Lord to reveal his truth to our hearts and this is what I was trying to put across in the stones or bread message hopefully this chapter these few thoughts will make that stones or bread message a little more clear we see this differentiation when the Lord at the end of the Sermon on the Mount you remember talks about two builders both of those builders heard the word the Lord actually is referring when he talks there about these sayings of mine he's talking about the Sermon on the Mount and it would do Christians good to study the Sermon on the Mount to believe the Sermon on the Mount and to obey the Sermon on the Mount it requires some skill I have to say because it's kingdom teaching it requires some skill in reading those three chapters to recognize what is strictly kingdom that is to say the kingdom of heaven and what also applies to the kingdom of God but both of those builders at the end of Matthew 7 heard the word the reason one building stood and the other building fell was because one man obeyed the word and the other disobeyed the word it got it in his head and therefore he was hindered because it was only in his head but the other man took it to heart he obeyed it and he built and his building stood and it's an interesting study to ask which I'm not going to do here what does that building signify one other example of this I found yesterday to my delight in John and chapter 13 John's gospel and chapter 13 where just before the Lord is going to the cross in the upper room on the night before his betrayal or rather on the night of his betrayal you remember he sits down with the twelve to the Passover and after the supper he washes their feet a beautiful picture of Christian humility a real example to us in fact let me read the Saviour's words um, excuse my phone ringing in the background um, he says in one place you call me master and lord and you say well for so i am if i then your lord and master have washed your feet ye also ought to wash one another's feet for i have given you an example that you should do as i have done unto you so this is a lovely picture of christian humility the lord god almighty himself the king of israel the creator of heaven and earth the son of God Jesus Christ kneels down and washes the feet of his disciples and some of us are too proud to any to do any such thing for our brothers we need to learn the lesson here just a simple humble task like that is the kind of thing that the Lord Jesus would do but in the context verse 17 in the context of our thoughts today verse 17 of John 13 says this if ye know these things happy are ye if ye do them and when the Lord says happy it means happy the difference between a miserable Christian which I confess I often am and a happy Christian is the miserable Christian knows these things but the happy Christian does them and this is the same teaching as we find at the end of Matthew 7 and I am sure is interwoven in scripture from start to finish that the blessing follows faith and obedience and not mere knowledge my brother or sister you could read your Bible till you're blue in the face but if you will not submit to its truth if you will not believe its truth if you will not yield your heart to the Holy Ghost and to the will of the Saviour as they're revealed you're going to be miserable believe me I know what I'm talking about uh, but once we find obedience we're going to find happiness if more Christians in more churches obeyed the Lord 
instead of just listening to the Lord we would build we would be blessed and our buildings and I can't go into what they might be but let's say your family if you're a father for example your family for Christian families indeed all families are called households they're called the building of God in the word of God so if you and I would not only heed the letter but hear the truth and obey it we shall build our families will be blessed our churches will be blessed our practices our efforts our enterprises will be blessed and they will withstand all the storms to some measure i confess my house has fallen down these last three year, three years and that's why i'm preaching these messages because this is what the lord has shown me we need bread not stones we need our hearts to be touched and not merely our minds Perhaps when this is uploaded to our uh, website, I will put on there, I will ask our webmaster, Mary O'Connor, to put on there a link to some messages by Herbert Roche. You will have seen Herbert Roche on our website. He did six messages called Heart and Mind. They are gold, and they go into these things deeply and very sweetly. And uh, I hopefully will get that uh, linked for you. Uh, but I'll tell you where to find it just in case Mary's not able to get it up for any reason the site you need to go to on YouTube is called Mike Klontz M-I-K-E C-L-O-N-T-Z Mike Klontz uh, open that up in YouTube go to the videos and then look for the um, what do they call it the sections you know the things are divided into sections I can't remember quite what they call them now and look for the section headed uh, Heart and Mind six messages there if you've enjoyed this, that will bless you abundantly. In the meantime, God bless you and thanks for listening. Amen.